Hey everyone, Hikiko here. It's been a while. I just want to let you know, this has been one of the most requested videos in my channel's history of all time. I've been accused of being an Xbox shill, an Xbot, whatever you want, uh, because I made my whole C-bomb videos on the PlayStation series of consoles, and that's just not the case. I'm a fan of all systems everywhere, but I just wanted to recognize that there might have been some bias present in my script, so I decided to hire an editor to look over my script to make sure I was being entirely fair to Microsoft in this video. So I hired somebody that had an Xbox Live account of over 15 years and over 300,000 on their gamer score. So if you have any complaints or death threats, please send them to my editor, King David 73 With that said, let's get into it. Does the Xbox have a C-bomb? In short, no. None of the Xbox motherboards have a CMOS battery on the motherboard, unless you count the OG Xbox, which has a clock capacitor known for leaking if you haven't removed or replaced it. And if that clock capacitor leaks, you could damage or fry your motherboard and you could be left with a dead Xbox. So if you haven't changed it out, you might want to do that. Could you give me a quick rundown of the current issues with Xbox preservation? Currently, the Xbox is stuck between generations, the Xbox One line and the Series line of consoles. As a consequence of this simultaneous generation thing going on, many of the Xbox games are confusingly labeled as catch-all Xbox games, which boast a cross-gen compatibility through Xbox's smart delivery system. However, these discs typically only contain the technically inferior Xbox One version of the game, despite it being labeled as a Series X disc on the box. Worse yet, the disc containing the Xbox One versions require the player to connect online to download specific configurations in order to play them on their Series X consoles. Now, if the player wants to play the upgraded Series X version of the same game, once again, they are forced to connect to Xbox Xbox's servers to download hefty updates in order to play the Xbox Series X version. In both scenarios, the player has to connect to Microsoft servers in order to play the physical game they purchased. Now, in terms of the preservation of the Xbox systems themselves, all Xbox Series consoles require an initial online activation and account setup in order to use them in the first place. And in the hypothetically far long future when Microsoft servers go down, you could be stuck with a potentially useless box. But who cares about the future, right? Let's talk about present problems. Let's say you are a person that lives in an area with less than broadband internet. Or perhaps you have an internet plan that includes a data cap. Or maybe you just don't have internet at all. How the fuck are you watching this video? Whatever your situation may be, if you want to get the most out of your Xbox, you are forced forced into an online ecosystem whether you like it or not. At some point, you will have to connect your device to the internet and download either system configurations, activate something, set your home console, and you only have one source to get all this from, Microsoft themselves. So if you don't want to participate in a whole online ecosystem entirely dependent on Microsoft servers to play the things that you own, then the Xbox might not be the console for you. What are the differences between Xbox discs? There are currently four different types of Xbox physical games. Xbox Original, OG Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One, and the very hard to find Xbox Series X only games. Things are a tad confusing when it comes to the labeling of the current generation of Xbox games, and allow me to explain why. Let's take a look at the Resident Evil Village box. On the top left corner, the game is clearly labeled as Xbox Series X first, then Xbox One. In the top right corner, there is a dedicated Xbox Series X sticker. This branding might confuse someone into thinking the Xbox Series X version of the game is on the disc, but it's not. In actuality, the disc contains the full 1.0 version of the Xbox One version of Resident Evil Village. That's good if you still have an old Xbox One lying around. Oh, uh, excuse me for a second. 
If you have an old Xbox One lying around, you can install Resident Evil Village from the disc and run the game completely offline if you have an Xbox One. In this scenario, the Xbox One version is preserved, but not so fast. If you take the same disc and put it into an Xbox Series X, you'll get far different results. The Xbox One version will install to the internal memory of the Series X, but if you try and launch the game offline, you'll get this warning. This game isn't ready yet. Go online to finish installing. So in order to play your Series X branded copy of Resident Evil Village from the disc, you need to connect to Xbox Live and download one configuration file in order to launch the Xbox One version of the game on the Xbox Series X. But we're not done. If you want to play the Xbox Series Series X version of the game that you thought you had purchased when you bought the disc, you'll need to download an additional 30 gigabyte update in order to play the superior version that you thought you bought. Your disc only plays the role of a license on your Xbox Series X, meaning you own the Xbox Series X version as long as Microsoft says you do, and that version of the game is not preserved in a physical form. If we take a look at what Sony's doing, you'll notice a different approach to physical distribution. Resident Evil Village received two physical versions, a PS4 disc version and a PS5 disc version. If you watch my video on the PS5 C-bomb tests, you'll notice that I concluded that you can install all physical games completely offline and without a CMOS battery on the PS5, and you fully own them with or without the involvement of Sony's servers. On the PlayStation, both versions are preserved, but this is not the case on the Xbox. And this is not me being biased, these are just the facts, and we've got to do something about it. Are there physical copies of Xbox Series X games? Yes, there are Xbox Series X only games, but they are super hard to find, and there's not much documentation on the internet to tell you what comes on the disc. Here's my copy of Judgment. Notice how the Series X appears on the cover slip, but there's no mention of Xbox One. If I try and put the disc in my Xbox One, it throws out an error code this time. Sorry, this game isn't compatible. Choose something else, or try the disc on Xbox Series X. Now if I take that same disc and I put it into my Xbox Series X, it will fully install the game. Better yet, I can launch the game completely offline with no updates required. The Series X version of Judgment is fully preserved. What's weird though is Judgment's sequel, Lost Judgment, has the Resident Evil Village problem. It's labeled as a Series X slash Xbox One game, but the disc contains only the Xbox One version on it, meaning the inferior version is fully preserved offline if you have your old Xbox One around. But if you want to play the Series X version of Lost Judgment, you have to connect to Microsoft servers and download a huge update file. Why did they backtrack here? Are there incomplete games on Xbox discs? Unfortunately, yes. A lot of Xbox games out there only contain a part of the game on the disc or no game whatsoever. These incomplete discs are known as stubs. They have to call out to Microsoft servers to download the game you just purchased instead of running them off the disc. Stubbs the Zombie is also a pretty cool game, you should check it out. More recently, Halo Infinite and Forza Horizon 5 were released as stubs on the disc, meaning the disc that you bought only contains a small fraction of the final game and cannot be played from the disc in its current state without downloading updates from Microsoft servers. Seeing reports that Forza Horizon 5's physical release only has about 20 gigabytes on disc and the rest is download. Looks like what's happening is they put 20 gigabytes of the Series X build and probably 20 gigabytes of the last gen build on disc. The full game is 100 gigabytes. Fellow preservationists and pretty cool YouTuber, you should check them out, Destruction Games, allowed me to use this clip of them installing Halo Infinite from the disc offline. They found that 14.7 gigabytes of data were contained on the disc. However, Destruction Games could not launch any 
mode within Halo Infinite, not even the single player campaign. The game prompted them to download the rest of the game if they wanted to play the disc that they bought. At that point, why release a disc? Why not just have a download voucher? Is there any information about what is or isn't on Xbox discs? There was a work in progress list being put together by Does It Play. They were trying to document which version of the game that you could get on the disc that you bought, meaning the Xbox One or the Series X version, or if you got the full game at all on the disc. And as they were working on this list, they received a lot of harassment, death threats, all that from fringe Xbox fans. Not all Xbox fans were not all like that. And they decided, well, not worth the trouble, and they quit working on that list. Hi folks, thanks for the continued support. We've gone private until this barrage of abuse subsides. We're getting multiple attempts to hack the account daily now, and a constant torrent of Xbox cultists being hyper-aggressive in the notification box. Thanks, prayer emoji. What the crazed Xbox zealots didn't understand is that Does It Play was on their side the entire time. They had no dog in this fight, they just wanted preservation for the Xbox One and Series X in the future. So gaming could get better for everyone, a mutual benefit kind of thing. And instead of, you know, assisting them and trying to get Microsoft's attention by pointing out the very known problems of the Xbox One and Series X, they decided to just go the death threat route <laughs> and scare off the people that were trying to help so unfortunately, does it play? They stopped work on the Xbox list and you can pause the video here and read their statement on why. It's very thoughtful and you should read it before you jump to conclusions. What is home mode for Xbox? Xbox home is a designation of your Xbox system and it ties it to your account. Essentially stating to Microsoft servers that this is my Xbox, this is my account that I use with this Xbox, I would like to play all the digital games I own offline on this box. Here's Microsoft's official statement from their support page to clarify matters more. How do I make my Xbox a home console? The first time you sign into an Xbox console and save your password, that console becomes your home Xbox. Your home Xbox lets you share games and content with other people who sign into it with their profile. You can change your home Xbox up to five times in any one year period. If you reach your limit for the year, we'll show you the next available date you can change it. So when you designate your Xbox as being your home Xbox, you can get all your digital games downloaded from the servers and then you can completely disconnect your Xbox offline and be able to play your digital games on that Xbox. Here's an example of me trying to launch Castlevania Symphony of the Night that I've had since the Xbox 360 on my Xbox One, which is not designated as my home console it blocks me from playing this game. However, if I try and launch it on my Series X, which is designated home, it will play just fine offline. It does make sense from a business standpoint why they implemented home mode. Essentially, if you allowed the player to just download their entire digital games library onto their Xbox and then allowed them to play it offline with no repercussions, they could essentially download their entire library to multiple Xboxes and then just sell those Xboxes with pre-installed libraries on there. So I understand there has to be a cutoff point, but it is problematic for people like me that have multiple Xboxes in their homes. I have my Xbox One, so I can still play my Kinect games like D4. So if I wanted to play that copy of D4, I would then have to designate my Xbox One as home, which would kick off my Series X as home, and then I would be one less home mode switch for that year. And five times, you run out pretty quickly. <laughs> So that is something that I think Microsoft has to iron out. Are legacy games, OG Xbox and 360 preserved? Yes, legacy games have been preserved on their respective platforms, meaning this copy of Silent Hill Homecoming, I can still play it on my Xbox 360, no problem. Straight from the disc, I don't have to connect to any servers, this game is mine. However, if I take this same copy, put it in my Series X, 
it acts as a stub. I have to download both the game and the emulator from Microsoft servers. So in a sense, Microsoft is in complete control of whether or not I can play this on their Series X. The Series X, the Xbox One, not natively backwards compatible with the 360 and Xbox One games, meaning I can't just run them from the disc natively on those systems. Microsoft has to get involved somehow. Keep in mind that licensing a backwards compatible title is kind of a messy process, and some of the games that used to exist on Microsoft servers, for example, Shadows of the Gosh Darned, can no longer be purchased from Microsoft Store. I'm not sure what this means for the rest of the backwards compatible titles, but it is concerning. Ironically enough, you can run the Xbox build of RetroArch and play various non-Xbox emulators and ROMs per permanently offline, which is currently doing a better job of preserving PlayStation's legacy games than Sony's current offerings. Don't you need a developer account to run emulators? No, you do not need a developer account to play ROMs and emulators on your Series X or Xbox One. Uh, that may have been true in the past, but ever since I've had my Series X, I've been able to run RetroArch legally on my own hardware without a developer account. Uh, that's why I prefer my Series X. It's kind of my all-in-one Swiss Army knife system. It plays four generations of Xbox games, Game Pass, and then RetroArch up to the Nintendo Wii. Thanks to Gamer13's work, players can now install whitelisted builds of RetroArch and other homebrew applications without needing a developer account. In other words, you can run these emulators in retail mode, which is the default mode of the Xbox. Here's a link to Gamer13's YouTube channel if you would like to learn more. It literally takes 10 minutes of research in order to do this. Only 10 minutes and you can have the library of Alexandria of ROMs and emulators on your Series X. Are you worried about getting your account banned for running RetroArch? I just want to state for the record that it's entirely up to the user to decide what sort of software they install on their legally purchased hardware. Meaning it's up to you whether or not you want to put RetroArch on your box. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just speaking from my own personal experience. I've had RetroArch installed on my Xbox Series X since day one. My account is still active. I still play online. I still do everything my Xbox account allows me to do no modifications necessary. And I still believe that Microsoft doesn't really give a shit whether or not you put emulators on your Series X or not, and these statements led me to my conclusion. A month ago, there was a rumor that Microsoft was closing all developer accounts, which was debunked within hours of the rumor circulation. Jason Ronald, Director of Program Management and the Backwards Compatibility Program at Team Xbox, had this to say, We have no plans to remove or disable developer mode on Xbox consoles. We continue to believe in and support a healthy independent app and game development community on Xbox. Also, Microsoft recently put out a six-part documentary called Power On, The Story of Xbox, which I highly recommend. It's super entertaining. And in part one, there was this moment that stuck out to me that clarified Microsoft's position on emulators. And we had a software emulator of a PlayStation that had been written for Windows. So you can imagine the executive surprise when we took a PlayStation disc, stuck it in the Xbox prototype, and immediately Tomb Raider came on screen in all its glory. That's right, the prototype for the original Xbox was demonstrated to Bill Gates by using a PlayStation 1 emulator running a pirated copy of Tomb Raider, which pitched the entire concept of the Xbox to Bill Gates, who approved of the thing, and in a sense, emulation and piracy is in the very DNA of the Xbox. What solutions do you suggest for Xbox to take towards preservation? Now, in terms of preserving the systems themselves, I think Microsoft needs to remove the initial online activation. 
I shouldn't have to connect to Microsoft servers to play the system that I just bought. The system that contains a DVD player and the DVDs that I bought for it should be able to run completely offline without intervention from Microsoft whatsoever. And now it makes more sense if you have a Series S and you don't care, it's an all digital future for you. But for those of us who care about physical media, we don't need Microsoft's help here, okay? Just let us play the games that we bought without your involvement. Now in terms of preserving the actual games themselves, I have a few solutions in mind. Solution one, implement all known game configurations for Xbox One titles into a system update to be applied to the Series X. This would allow users to launch their disc games without further need of connecting to Xbox servers after the system update. Solution two, just include the needed Xbox One configurations on the discs so they can be played on the Xbox Series X without the need to connect online in the first place. Granted, it's not the Series X version, which would have been preferable, but at least it's something you can play. Solution 3. Allow the user to download the backwards compatibility configurations on their PCs or be able to install them through a USB drive. This would allow these configurations to be archived and preserved for the future, and it allows the user to not participate in the Xbox Live ecosystem if they don't want to. Solution 4. Just print the full playable game on the disc in the first place so I can play the game that I bought offline. I know that's a novel concept <laughs> for Microsoft, but it'd be really nice if they could just go ahead and give me the thing I paid for. Thank you. In an interview with Steven Totillo of Axiom, Phil Spencer shed some light about their thoughts regarding the whole C-Bomb incident. Not in story, but regarding CMOS issues on Xbox hardware. The hardware team is hearing the message about our consoles should allow for the ongoing relationship between the player and the content that they own. So like, we hear the message and the teams are looking at things. I do worry a little bit about losing our art form and the history of it. And, you know, when, when I think about like old ROMs and MAME and these things of like where these old games are going to go as the hardware that's capable of running these or running those games or uh, kind of interpreters and, and emulation systems, I really wish as an industry we'd come together to help preserve the history of what gaming is about so we don't lose the ability to go back. I think about like what the Paley Center did for TV of, you know, Paley early on saw that TV industry was getting ready to throw away literally the tapes that these old TV shows were on. And he said, hey, I want to archive those because at some point somebody will want to go back and watch the Ed Sullivan show or something. And those things shouldn't be thrown away. And as an industry, I would love it if we came together to help preserve the history of, of what our industry is about so we don't lose access to some of the, um, the things that got us to where we are today and built this industry. That would be a cool thing. Statements like this lead me to think it's not all doom and gloom. It's really remarkable that Phil Spencer has acknowledged these problems and concerns of preservation in the public face. It's a lot more than what Sony did to me whenever I made my C-bomb videos. Their strategy was to just outright deny the C-bomb existed and then in the background patch it out. Fine, we finally came to a solution, but was it necessary not to publicly acknowledge it? I don't know. But in that regard, Microsoft has earned some goodwill with me. I will keep you all up to date with future videos if a solution is ever found to these issues. In conclusion, it seems like Microsoft still has a lot of work to do in terms of preservation on their platforms. Thankfully, they've publicly acknowledged they have these problems and they are working towards some solutions. Only time will tell if they ever do solve them. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I've been Hikiko. Phil Sama, is that you? Hey son, I just warped here from the future to give my personal thanks for preserving the Xbox. We really red ring the situation in a manner of speaking. Sorry about that. Oh, no apologies necessary. I just love video games and I want them to be preserved now and in the future. And now.
Nonsense. I didn't time travel all this way just to shine your balls. I owe a debt, and I intend to pay it. You get one wish. Anything you want. Anything? Anything? Hurry it up now. I don't have all day, even though I technically have the ability to move freely through the fourth dimension. Fourth dimension? 4D. Well, there is this one thing. Go on. Wish, boy. Whatever you want. Okay. I wish for D4 Season 2. Mecha Lecha High, Mecha Microsoft. Pick up D4 Story where Season 1 left off. Go on, son. Check your games library. Make sure your console is set to home now. Oh my god. It's there! This is literally the best day of my life! Finally, the time has come again. He has awakened. Everyone thought he was gone. Forgotten. And many said... El Rey? Who are you talking about? That voice, it sounds so familiar. Where have I heard it before? Oh no. How exactly does this work now? You need to relax. Oh my god, no! Stop! Just stop it! Why does this keep happening? Tricked ya. Monkey paw wish, bitch. Bye! Phil Sama, <laughs> why? <laughs> this wasn't the D I was looking for! Mr.